morning folks, the time is half ten and I'm half an hour in to my mini section hike of the Scottish National Trail. The plan is to do this over three days and two nights, starting in Blair Raffle and finishing in Kinyusi. So the plan tonight is to do 27 kilometres and camp at Bynack Lodge. I'm just coming up for 7 kilometres on the clock so <laughs> I've got a little bit to go. Just behind me there is Marble Lodge. After Marble Lodge another 4 or 5 kilometres up the track is Forest Lodge. Then after that you're pretty much going into remote country and it should get a little bit more interesting. So I'm now approaching the aptly named Forest Lodge which is roughly the halfway mark. What's the time Robin? Rap o'clock. There's been a wind channeling down the glen all day so I've come down to this little bridge to see if I can get a bit of shelter and get a macro wrap on the go. It's actually macro in the roll. Can't have macro wraps without Kev. That would just be sacrilege. Right, I'm back on the go. I needed that macro wrap. That was just a ticket. I'm going to get my head down for a few kilometres and I'll bring you back follow along the track. That's me reached the fork in the track and I've headed off down to the right. If you head up on the left track that'll wind its way around into Mamba land near the Tarf Hotel Boffy. So that's me done just over 19 kilometres and uh, it's 27 kilometres to Bynack Lodge so that leaves me about 8 to go. That kind of ties in with the map. in that direction there, that'll take you to Glen Loch and Loch Loch, which is uh, quite original. Not. I will be going this way though. I'm hoping when I get round that corner, we'll see a bit more of the Cairngorm Mountains. There's been some impressive rockfall here. Wonder how many years that's been there. Probably hundreds, you never know though. Right, I'm almost at the Falls of Tarf. Check this out by the way, this is cracking. What a setting. Well this is fantastic I have to say, well impressed. If only I'd brought my bikini and wheelie hat I'd be in there. In all seriousness, I do wish I was a stronger swimmer because that did look inviting but swimming's never been my forte. I've got the Scottish Elver badge which uh, is half a length 
<laughs> that was back in primary school. I think I can manage about a length or maybe a length and a half these days. I've always been a walker or a runner in cycling. But I'm going to bring you back when I find my pitch. So I shall see you then. Alright folks, I'm not quite there yet. Three, three clicks on the map and I'm there. But I thought I'd just bring you back a little bit early. Because what's happened is the glen has opened up and it's much more spacious now. And there's some little wild camping spots around here. But I'm going to push on. I must admit though, I am struggling. I've aggravated my right hip. It's a little bit sore and that has slowed me down. So I'm going to have to get some vitamin I down me when I reach camp. Right folks, I thought I'd bring you back yet again. <laughs> I just want to point out this massive lump here, this big snowy one, that is Ben McDewey. The Cairngorm giants have appeared. Right in front of Ben McDewey is Carnivame. Kind of blends in a little bit. And just to the right here is Derry Cairngorm. So there you go. This lodge is taking the piss. Literally half a kilometre, if that. And it still hasn't come into sight. <laughs> right folks, 7 hours 10 minutes, I've made it, I'm here, thank god for that, let's get set up. Right, that's the notch pitched, just in front of the lodge. Right folks, that's the stove on, starving, I've got a little starter, having that first, and then for dinner. Trying these new meals. Chicken and ham carbonara. So hopefully that'll be decent. It's five past six, so I've got a long night ahead on my Jack Jones. That's alright, I'm quite happy. Nice place to pitch. Nice feeling of remoteness. Oh, good morning campers, it is 20 past 6 and it's currently minus 2 degrees and it's looking nice outside.
All right, folks, it's uh, just gone eight o'clock and that's me back on the go. I've got a couple of river crossings to do further on, which I'll show you. Um, can't imagine there being any problems with that. Well, that's river crossing number one, just over here. A bit slippy in the frost, but no significant problems. Right, this is river crossing number two. I just managed to tiptoe across without getting wet feet. So I'm glad these rivers are not in spate. Right, this is river crossing number three that I've yet to do. I'm thinking some stepping stones here. Go over to that big boulder maybe. Then across. I'm not sure I took the correct line across, but I did go to that big boulder and then I kind of zigzagged my way across. But I've got dry feet and that's exactly what matters. Right, to the Red House and beyond. So this here is Ben Vroten, just over and beyond. Kevin and I done this last year. Got the Moiny Moor here. And straight ahead, we've got Gildy Lodge and these remote Apple Forest Munros. Right, that's 11 plumber since leaving the campsite this morning. And uh, I must say I'm enjoying this. This may be boring to others, but just the vastness and the wide open of all this is brilliant. I was a bit worried I might be suffering from FOMO. And what I mean is, on a day like this, I should be up on the summits, but I like this, it's good. This here looks like a good place to stop for some lunch. It's out of that wind. There's a stunning waterfall there. I think it's called the the Ida. This little building's actually marked on the map, but I don't know how much use it'd be in a life or death situation. It's uh, certainly seen better days, so um, don't rely on it. Depending on the wind direction, you may get a little bit of shelter in that corner there. But aye, just in case you're on the route and you're struggling and don't think you'll make it to Glen. Um, that off-road vehicle hasn't half ripped up this terrain. It's really boggy in places. I don't know how bad it was before, but I kind of wrecked it. Alrighty folks, there's a bit of confusion here. Uh, the lie of the land doesn't agree with my map. This track co crosses the Feshe there, but on the map it comes around this river. But that looks a bit dodgy. There's a path there though, and I don't want to cross that and end up on the wrong side. But I don't know if the river's changed course. 
uh, since Storm Frank when all the damage happened so I'm going to follow that track but tentatively if the worst comes to the worst I'll just take my boots off and wade across but that means I'd have to cross this river twice so I'm going this way yeah there's definitely been some erosion I have to be careful with this little bit here you can see there the path continues on right so that's the first obstacle out of the way I must admit we alarm bells are ringing here I just hope this path isn't a dead end so there's the track there with the crosses bizarre but anyway let's go well the little path continues on but I'm just going to pick up the track again here it is so quiet I'm going to get so much stick for this Look at that magic. <laughs> well, folks, that's me pretty much solid. I've got my kitchen here. Gordon Ramsay, eat your heart out. And uh, I've just got these freeze dry efforts to have shortly. Chicken fried rice. Good morning, campers. It's just not long gone 8 o'clock and um, I do apologise about the lack of footage but I was just keen to get packed up and away down the road Last night I was pretty tired as well so uh, this is stage 3 in the last day of the hike I'm going to be following the national sorry I'm going to be following the Scottish National Trail for so far but the route that takes you to King Yusei it's kind of meanders away and it looks a bit of a pain to be honest so I've worked out there is a little shortcut that will shave off a good bit of distance and I'll show you that later on folks this area just needs a little bit of care you can see here it's a little bit steep and the road is going down but uh, Miller Nature did this it's quite impressive huge scar Righty-o, that took me exactly one hour to reach the bridge there, so that's not too bad and now I'm just about to join the minor road here so I need to watch out for this little right-of-way shortcut to Kenyusi That's me now on the shortcut I was talking about uh, the signpost back there said Kenyusi 7 miles, so that's pretty good it doesn't have shave off a lot of distance but I know what the purists will be saying Oh no, I'm sorry old chap, you can't say you've done the Scottish National Trail You'll have to go back and do that section Jog on
came out of that woodland and it's just been blasted by cold air, it's freezing. Just tried the door in the buffet behind me there, but it's locked. It looked a bit basic anyway. But I thought it might have been good to grab some shelter and a bite to eat. But the show must go on now. If it wasn't for the cloud, I think that'd actually be a really nice view. You've got the Munro Skur Gui up in the cloud there somewhere. I can just see the path meandering up. Not a day for the top, so. Ho ho! First glimpse of can you say? I just zoom in and show you. There we go. Should all be downhill from here. Alright folks, I've reached the small hamlet of Drumgush and at the crossroads here I'm going to swing a left. Alright folks, that's the uh, Tromme Bridge there and I'm going to join the Speyside Way Alright folks, I've got a mile to Can You Say so it seems like a good time to wrap up the video so if you watched this far, thank you very much and as always I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!